Well, hello again. My intrepid traveler is coming over from part number five of ten. Uh, we're going to look at zero code suppression methods. Uh, for those of you who had just uh, kind of stumbled on this thing right here, you're wondering what part six of ten. Well, this is part six of ten of our updated time division multiplexing and pulse code modulation for T-type and E-type carrier systems. If you're not familiar with um, T-type and E-type carrier system, I strongly suggest that you look at our playlist, click on our playlist, and start at the beginning of this. Um, I'm hoping that this comes out as kind of a linear story. That's certainly my intent. Um, otherwise, uh, stick with us here, and uh, perhaps you'll follow it, and perhaps you'll be a little lost, and then finally go back to the beginning and start at the beginning. So here we go. Zero code suppression methods on our digital signal being applied across the tip and ring pair of our T-type or E-type carrier transmission. Now, there are problems when you apply a, a, a signal on a, a twisted pair cable um, because I mentioned before there's no way to clock the uh, receiver to the transmitter with an extra wire because you only have two wires from the transmitter to the receiver. So this uh, clocking issue is a problem and particularly a problem if uh, for whatever reason the transmitter is going to send a long string of zeros or no voltages right so we have another timing issue here the uh, bipolars or the biplers or the AMI would handle the um, marking uh, problems but uh, when you're sending all spaces then you got another problem which is no clocking at all so, all right, so uh, now note here uh, my little shmi is telling you this will not happen on voice channels because there's always some local line noise being coded so um, any one of the 8-bit bytes representing a voice um, sample quantizing and code as we showed in the much earlier parts, would always have a little bit of a signal uh, being sent, some number value being sent, because uh, the lines are, they always have a little noise in them. Um, so this would really be more uh, where you're trying to send uh, digital data um, across a number of different uh, individual DSO channels. Once again, if you didn't understand what I just said, the DSO channel, you need to go back to the uh, earlier uh, parts of these tutorials. So there's two ways to fix this dearth of marks, right? Long strings of zeros. Uh, the first one I'll show you is to restrict the individual data, digital data carrying DSO tributaries to 56, not 64, because the time slot, the channel, if it's channelized, will be a 64K channel. Well, the easiest way to make sure that nobody sends a whole bunch of zeros and they don't collect by having a whole bunch of channels send a bunch of zeros in sequence is don't let them send uh, a, this full 64K, right? Don't let them do that. And one, one, the way you do that is to insert a mark in the least significant bit of each of the individual DS0 or you know, 64 kilobit uh, streams. But this only works on channelized systems. Uh, because each channel is going to have an 8-bit byte 8,000 times per second creating 64 kilobits and if it's not channelized then you don't have this option here so I'll have to show you how to get around that by going to this allow what's generally known as clear 64 and have the transmitter equipment not the channel equipment the transmitter equipment substitute bogus marks into the multiplex stream after it's all uh, kind of put together, all the individual channels coming in here, and then you, uh, in the multiplexer, you do this little uh, kind of a bogus thing. So I'll show you the first one first, because it's first. Fix number one, each digital data channel only allowed seven bits. So normally the individual channel would have an eight bit uh, position here, eight uh, bits within the 125 microsecond window. If it's coming in here as a digital data channel, not a voice channel, but a digital data channel, is um, we would restrict them. We would only let them send 56. Now we have to get into how you map digital bits from a computer into our digital time slots here, which is a little more than I want to do right here, but I'll certainly mention it. 
So they come in here with a, a seven bit byte, 8,000 times per second, which would be 56 kilobits. And then the equipment, the channel itself, constantly inserts a mark. So even if this were all spaces, there would still be a mark in each one of these data channels. Now the voice channels, the codec channels right here, we don't have to worry about that. Right? So it would be just data. And that kind of brings us over here to the DDS services. Uh, really early a digital data service, the, the highest uh, rate that you could run was 56 kilobits. And it was because these early systems had to be concerned about these guys all sending zero right, when their time access comes up. And so you could end up sending long strings of zeros, 16 at minimum, if two channels. Uh, sequentially sent all zero, you'd have 16 zeros. That's a violation. You can't do that because um, the receiver would lose synchronization. So up here I'm telling you, um, and I've said this before, I didn't say it in the last part either, you really do need to stop your video every once in a while and read some of the stuff that I have up here because I generally tend to summarize the channel. Um, I did say something in here that's going to require that you follow me into the next parts of it. The voice codec channels never sent all space zero and their least significant bit was bit rob for call control, supervision and signaling functions. So not only would you not ever hear a, a truly quiet channel on a voice channel, but they were doing some other weird things um, for uh, sending the telephone number to be called across the facility and so on and so on. That was this uh, bit rob function. This gets very very convoluted and complicated. Uh, so once again going forward I'm going to try to simplify that as much as possible for you because it's still being done today big time. So if you see this DDS Digital Data Service, I don't know if there's still any of it around but uh, all you have to do is restrict these people to a 7 bit byte 8,000 times per second and shove a bogus mark in there and you get over this problem of having long strings of zeros. So here's my mark for that channel. And then the voice channel didn't need it and then here's another data channel needed a bogus mark and so on and so on. Fix number two otherwise known as clear 64, meaning we didn't restrict the customer to 56. We let them have all of the 64 of their channel. All right. So all zeros in results in all zeros out. So you end up with this long string of zeros. You're not allowed to do that because the receiver loses sync. So the simplest way to do that is let every one of these tributaries send whatever pattern they want. All zeros all the time. We don't care. And in here in the transmitter when it discovers that uh, it's going to have a, a string from channel 1 and a string from channel 2 and a string from channel 3 uh, all sending zeros says oh I am not going to let you do that uh, instead I'm going to send a, a bogus pattern out on the transmission line that the receiver will recognize as being applied in order to keep this all zeros from happening right? so that it knows you know, where all the channels are so it knows where to start counting those things. So when the transmitter finds it must send eight spaces it doesn't even wait for this 16 it says hey man if there's more than eight I'm gonna do this it will send three zeros then a bipolar violation then a DC balance mark a one which would be a plus or a minus three in our examples then a zero followed by another violation a DC balance mark so this is what the uh, system is supposed to send right here in our example. I've got all these zeros coming in here. This is what it's supposed to send is a mark and then space, 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 like that. This is what it actually sends out on the tip and ring twisted pair cable, the transmit. It sends the, the real mark right here. Then it allows three zeros to be sent out, no voltage for these three time periods or bit uh, position periods. Then it intentionally sends a violation. Why is this a violation? Because it's in the same polarity as the previous mark. Then it sends a balance bit so that the voltage is balanced out to zero. Then another uh, valid zero right here then a violation. Why is this a violation? Well because this balance bit was uh, negative down here so it's a violation of the bipolar rule. Then it sends right 
another balance bit so I end up with zero volts and the plus and minus cancel each other out as far as the wire is concerned right so there it is right there bipolar 8-0 substitution or suppression I've seen it listed both ways there's also a 6 and a 3 but this one's the easiest to see right so long string of zeros do this 0 0 0 violation substitution 0 violation substitution 0 0 0 now down here this is the same thing except that the real uh, the original uh, true mark was in the negative position so this has to be effectively turned over right violation because of that balance because of that real zero violation because of that balance because of that right so b8zs it gets around that problem of uh, restricting customers input uh, bit streams um, and this was uh, designed because uh, you know we did we wanted customers to have the entire uh, 64 kilobits of the individual channel but when we get to an uh, an unchannelized unchannelized system this becomes very very important because the uh, unchannelized we could be having um, like HDLC high level level data link control frames Ethernet frames all kinds of stuff that could have really long strings of zeros and uh, this thing is going to have to say hey this is what you're going to send on the wire at the receiving end the receiver understands this this B8ZS and it strips all this off and hands all zeros to uh, the device on the back side of the receiver all right so there you go the e carrier same thing I did call it something different HDB3 high density bipolar 3 it's the same idea right here you've sent some violations and then depends on uh, some variables in here but uh, it's the same idea as the receiver strips off these violations um, and the balances and says hey I'm gonna give all zeros to my customer because that's what the customer at the other end was actually sending so don't be afraid it's just a little test long strings of zeros or no volts can what it's real obvious right? lose synchronization yeah a bipolar violation is what? A bipolar. <laughs> uh, two consecutive marks in the same polarity, right? And there could be a number of zeros between those two marks, uh, but uh, two marks in the same polarity is not supposed to be there. Either you picked up an extra mark or you lost a one that should have been there, right? In order for two of them to be in the same uh, polarity, either plus or minus. B8ZS means. Uh, I'm telling you, I don't know where these come out of my head. Now, bring eight zebras singing. i never seen one of those. Uh, be, means uh, violate the bipolar to suppress zeros. Uh, you act intentionally bipolar, uh, violating the, uh, the bipolar rule. And then putting in uh, balance bits and so on in order to suppress these long strings of zeros. Very, very important when we get to, into unchannelized uh, because I don't think there's any 56 kil, kilobit digital data stuff uh, left around here. There may be some, some out there in the world someplace, but uh, these uh, unchannelized things, that, this becomes really important. Right? So there we go. End of part six of the ten. Um, I suspect most of you are probably going to take a break about this point. Um, I'll see you back over on part seven eventually, I hope. So, 10 4 Roger, rubber ducky, over and out.